What a day today. We're going to call this Super Tuesday, but it's not Tuesday. But we'll pretend it's Tuesday. If you're not watching this on Tuesday, then that's great. Because <laughs> it's not Tuesday. I'm James. Joining me today is Rob. We're going to have a good time talking today. Rob, what is up? Uh, James, I'm really happy to be here on Wonder Wednesdays, but we're going to be talking about that Wonder Twins movie. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's Wonder, Wonder Man is happening, though, from the director of Wonder Avengers Wonder. Kang right. Dynasty. <laughs> That's happening. We're gonna get look. We got. We're gonna have. We have uh, three cool topics to discuss today. We're gonna discuss the MCU, Mortal Kombat two, because I love Mortal Kombat, and we're gonna talk the movie Mortal Kombat. I mean, I love the game Mortal Kombat. We're gonna talk the movie Mortal Kombat, and our last topic, the final topic. If you're here for it and you want to fast forward to the end, go for it. If you're watching it during the premiere, you can't. Uh, we're gonna talk about Henry Cavill. Is he coming back as Superman or not? What? is going on all right rob let's get right into the stuff today we don't have much time I mean, we have a lot of time but we don't have much time we need people to understand that we're here to give you what you need to know let's talk about the mcu jonathan krasinski was on jimmy fallon last night spoiler alert we're gonna go into spoilers in the multiverse of uh, madness movie the doctor strange i haven't even seen it but we're gonna talk spoilers a multiverse of madness. All the spoilers are out there. <laughs> They're all out there. I just saw that Agatha Har- Harkness is in the the movie. Is, does she show up at the end, or is that, that that doesn't happen? Was that a clip they just they spliced that in from the Wandavision show? I suppose I don't know what I saw. I saw something and I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't so, even believe they spliced anything in there. Yeah, she's not even in it. I don't believe. No, it. no, it was a clip. I saw a clip and I think they might have spliced two things together. Oh, anyway, okay. whatever. Who cares? Things happen in this movie. It, it's a movie people liked it people didn't like it. it it is what it is it's the mcu they drop it and they move on you don't get to dwell on it whether you like it or not uh but john john krasinski who everybody but me wanted to play uh reed richards in the fantastic four finally played reed richards in the fantastic four uh rob you've seen the movie i've seen people split on this now actually like i thought it would be like people would be like elated by it but a lot of people are like nah, he was okay what were your thoughts on his performance as reed richards I mean, uh, him in Multiverse of Madness, I thought he was good and stuff like that. It's just like, you know, he, he didn't get much time. He altogether got like two scenes. That's, that's, what, that's what he got in the movie, right? And uh, for people who have not seen it, once again, spoilers, you basically get to see one scene of him with the rest of the Illuminati and then a small little flashback and then his death scene. And <laughs> that's, re- that's really all you get. Uh, for him in the movie. So from what they had, I thought I thought he was good. I thought he was fine. I, I, I don't think that I'm completely, you know, thinking that he's the perfect uh, Reed Richards right now because we got so little of him, stuff like that. But I thought he was a great choice in general. And um, yeah, if he, if he is back in Fantastic Four, I'd be completely open to that and completely be happy for that. I'm still confused about his casting in Multiverse of Madness. I know Foggy did it for fan service, and I get that. But you went with other actors who have portrayed those roles in the past. We've had two Reed Richards theatrically already. Well, more than but three. But we've had them in, like, we've had two of them that are pretty solid actors that you could have put in Multiverse of Madness. And instead, you went with one who has no connection other than fan service to be in it. So that always struck me as a little odd. But anyway, he was on Jimmy Fallon last night. I don't know if you saw it. Rob, but he talked about a new movie he's doing, Imaginary Friend, uh, with Ryan Reynolds and Steve Carell. He's reunited with Steve Carell for that movie. He talked a little bit about that, and he talked a little bit about doing uh, playing Reed Richards. And at the end of the interview, they kind of showed this thing where I had Jim is Jim the villain of The Office, and they played around with it. And he says, you know, well, I, actually, I would play, and he jokingly said, I played Jim as a villain, and that's why I did the Fantastic Four to even it out and he kind of said it and no one's thought much but now the internet is ablaze rob that he let it slip that he will be coming back in the fantastic four in phase 3000 when they finally get to the fantastic four movie in marvel i didn't really think it was a slip up i think you know you associate he's part of the fantastic four that's you know he's and i think people have said it so much to him in the past uh but what what do you make of that do you think he slipped up there uh or or do you think he's do you think he's just done with being reed richards I don't think he's done because he had a lot of fun with it. Like earlier in that interview where he was just like, he, they kept going back and forth about him trying to pull answers out of him. And, uh, uh, John Cruz, it's, it was being non, non-confrontational about it, especially even the moment when he's just talking about Emily Blunt, possibly being an invisible woman. And he faked being shot. I thought that was kind of funny too. Uh, but at the end of the day with that little thing, I know it's setting the world of the, the, uh, comic world ablaze that it's like oh he's gonna come back as fantastic four i don't think he slipped out or anything i think he just misspoke 
I think he meant to say when I played Reed Richards yeah. or, you know, when, when I was in Multiverse of Madness. Because at the same time, if he was – if we were legitimately expecting that he meant Fantastic Four, I mean, these interviews aren't live. They are – Pre- yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. They're done earlier in the day. They cut stuff out of them all the time for time, for time's sake. So if that was him literally speaking out and it's a it's a slip of the mind and stuff like that, and you accidentally said it, he he or his publicist or Marvel, more specifically, Ken Feige would have been like, okay, cut that out of the interview. Make sure you cut that out. Right. There's also a chance that he did say it, he did slip up, and everybody said, Well, you know, hit it in plain sight, right? You just look. Uh, my my feeling though, Rob is is they they the Fantastic Four movie at one point was supposed to be the end of Phase Four. Now it's apparently going to be Phase Six, which is like so far down the line. I don't even I don't even know if I care to think about it right now. There's rumors they're going to announce the cast at uh, D23, which is coming up in just a few short weeks now. Mm-hmm. And I I think you know if he's not Reed Richards, I think he's got to. He's really got to say, you know, that's it. Because if you, because when you watch that interview, they were careful to really discuss only multiverse of madness in any kind of deep, right? Like they really they use multiverse of madness as the way. Um, because someone's playing Reed Richards, and it might be him, it might not be him. Uh, I'm kind of in at this point. I've stopped caring. I don't, <laughs> like I don't even know. I, I mean, maybe I won't even see the movie. Who I haven't seen the last. I haven't seen most of Phase Four, as you know. I saw Shang Chi and No Way Home are the two <laughs> Phase Four movies I saw. Out of the movies, yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw the Hawkeye Seagulls- and WandaVision. Yeah, yeah, but I barely watch the shows because there's too many. There's too- we talked about this, this a little bit on the weekend too. It's like there's, the the M- the Marvel desaturation is really hitting me. It's hitting me. I- I'm sure it's hitting more people, but it's really hitting me, and I'm almost like. Ugh. If I miss it, I miss it at this point. I used to be like, I got to go see them all. Now I'm like, if I miss one, I miss one. I don't have the urgency to see it. First of all, I'm going to click on YouTube or Twitter or something, and the whole thing's going to get ruined for me anyway. Secondly, that you know, it's just at some point, I'm like, why am I interested in all of this? If you know, like, show me why I'm interested. And and I will say, the two Avengers movies that they announced do intrigue me. I know we're getting Secret Invasion, the show coming up soon, but Secret Wars is coming out. Is it next November, like a year from November? Uh, it's November 2025. And 2025? The, 2025, yeah. That's when the, but then the Kang one is May 2025. Yes, exactly. And then 2025? Uh, and then Fantastic Four is uh, November 2024. I'm out. I'm out. You do this on your 2025? <laughs> Shut yes. up. What's this? It's an odd part in general because it's like, you know, they took 10 years, 11 years technically to tell you th- the first three phases of the, of this, of the series, right. Of, of the MCU. And now five years to do the next three, right. They, they really packing in a lot in here. And I mean, uh, it's kind of, we're the same boat. I've been kind of with, uh, uh, with you, uh, James, how it's been like phase four has been a lot of character introductions, a lot what? of character introductions, new character introductions, and that's where I'm just kind of like, okay, we're getting all these characters and they're good and stuff like that. But I'm just like, I'm kind of finding it difficult about how they're fitting away in the puzzle. Go ahead. James. Yeah. The puzzle part I'm with you, but the, the phase one of the, the, the thing was introduction of characters as well. Right. It was Iron Man, Hulk, Captain Thor, like those guys. And then, and then they had Black Widow in there and whoever else, but, and then Hawkeye, but then, and then, and then they, but that led to an Avengers movie. Whereas phase four is leading to phase five. Like, it's like, why is it, why is it like, I feel like phase four and phase five might just be one phase, but for some reason they feel the need to like, well, it's two phases just because we want to blow you. And honestly, I feel like they're just doing it because they know that they're going to blow the fanboys minds. And that's where they're like, it's phase five. And they're like, ah, and like, but it's not, it's like, it's the same thing. Like there's no end. Like Avengers, at least you're like, okay, well that kind of cut that. That kind of stopped there. Like you kind of got that idea. Whereas this one's just like, and I'm I'm okay with them doing these movies if they want to do them and these shows when they want to do them. But don't pretend like that there's something else to play here. You're setting up your new characters, and you're re- I think they're really trying to see what sticks ultimately, <laughs> what they're going to use. But, but it's just like these phases. It's like they're just saying the phases because that's their thing, and they feel like they need to. Because I like phase four. I just haven't felt like it's been a phase yet. 
No, yeah, and it's been like I, I, my 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 thing. Why I think it's different with Phase Four and Phase One is that you know Phase One the, was the introduction of the universe altogether, right? So that's why you obviously had to introduce all these characters because they weren't the, the this is the beginning of your universe, right? So there was all going to be introductions. That was the whole thing, right? You know, um, for me for this one, I mean, I made the mistake of I kind of read a story breakdown as to what Wakanda Forever is going to be and included a, a, a possible spoiler about how it's going to end. And Sorry, is it, that phase it, four it, or five? Uh, four. It would be the uh, Wakanda Forever is in, in phase four. It's the last uh, uh, project in phase four. And if it ends the way it does, then I could for, very much see why it's the end of phase four. I, I It's it's a really strong end. But at the, also at the same time, I understand, like, you know, um, ending a phase on a little bit of a whimper, or not even a whimper, but like not even not a, a movie that's not a big deal. And I mean, technically, if you look back on the MCU, Phase Two technically ended with Ant Man. So, and uh, th- that's not exactly a big, big. Um, oh, and phase I guess ending, phase, phase ending movie. Phase uh, Three ended on no on Far From Home, right? Far From Home as but well. But that's yeah. a joke. It's the Avengers is the cap off. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. Let's just, no stop it. Stop it. Spoilers for everybody that don't want to hear it. Tell, Rob, you got to tell us this thing that you heard about Black Panther. You can't just you can't just throw that out and then we not talk about it. We don't we're not into like you know the the rumor mill and stuff like that. But I got to hear what this is because we're having this discussion on what the phases are. And if you say that there is an ending that could be an ending for Phase Four, I think it's fair game to talk about that and see if that actually is something that we would assumed that we would uh, ex- I don't want to say accept because it's not our call but would that be satisfactory for us so spoilers if you don't want to hear it this is not true it could not be it might be false it might be true it might be accurate it might be not it might only be partially true we don't know spoilers Rob I'm putting you on the spot here but just just briefly tell us what it yeah, is yeah I'll briefly say it I'm uh, this is just more the overall story I'm not going to mention who the black new Black Panther is I'm not going to mention any of the other big story points. just the main uh, plot of the movie and is that's where and may or may not be sure. Uh, but um, uh, sure. Yeah, th- th- I'll, I'll say it. It, it, it. In the in the story breakdown I read, it is sure. Yeah, because we saw the there. pictures and it's clearly her. Okay. <laughs> and the Lego <laughs> uh, yeah. as well. The Lego set that just got uh, uh, put out. And uh, yeah, so the main story apparently of the movie is that uh, Namor and the Atlanteans are after Riri Williams, Ironheart. And the reason that they're after her is because apparently she was involved in an incident in which a lot of Atlanteans got killed. And she basically goes to uh, Wakanda and they, they hold her like, you know, on, on their, um, in their country as, as protect protection. And basically, you know, this, the, the whole movie leads to it and the whole like, you know, fight winds up and it, and it fully happens. Right. And the big post credit scene that ends this movie, it turns out that, Riri Williams did not, in, in fact, had nothing to do with this whole situation. It was Doctor and Doom. It was Doctor Doom. It looked very uh, that. Uh, I just guessed that. I just th- guessed that for real. <laughs> that that orchestrated the whole thing because they wanted Atlantis and Wakanda to go to war. He wanted Atlantis and Wakanda to go to war. If if it's true, and I guess that, I can only imagine a real comic book fan figuring that out way before I did. I don't. They're just you know. Well, and, and it makes a lot of sense too, especially with the announcement of Secret Wars, and he play and Doctor Doom plays a pretty big. Uh, role in Secret Wars, so introducing him in something like this and keeping him as a thread throughout Phase Four, sorry, throughout Phase Four, Five, and then Phase Six, obviously with the Fantastic Four movie coming and into Secret Wars, uh, makes sense a lot. And I think that the introduction of Doctor Doom would be a pretty huge uh, and massive, Four. massive. I think everybody, like me, I'm not. I mean, I love comics, but I'm not a massive comic guy. Doctor Doom is like you're waiting for Doctor Doom. The true Doctor Doom to show up, like yeah. Eminem. Yeah, you're just waiting for Doctor Doom. Like that as, sounds fine. And as Star Wars fans, like I for just full on want him to be like the presence of Darth Vader in the MCU. If he has the presence of Darth Vader, that that'd be amazing. Absolutely. Like every, every time you see him walk into a room, it's like seeing Darth Vader. That's what I want to see. Absolutely. I don't know if they'll pull that off because Marvel's a completely different beast and they'll, they'll probably have like a big personality and everything, but uh, we'll see. I, I'd be excited for that as well. I like that ending though. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but like the movie, I think the, the Black Panther 2 movie looks gorgeous. I thought it was like, I think I was like, oh, this might be the best looking um, uh, Marvel movie we've seen, like just based on the visuals and that trailer. Uh, but, but I mean, obviously they didn't give you a plot, but you knew that T'Challa was gone and 
so that was my my thing was like I'm like this looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited for this. Pretty stoked for this. Let's see what we got in that post credit scene. Just mentioned I really like that. Uh, one thing I did say to you, I mentioned this um, again, like because I love DC. Also, I love the DC films. And you look at you look at the MCU and you look at DC, and there's similarities so much between Marvel and DC. Like I, they're all ripoffs of each other, right? But they had a chance to do the multiverse first. DC did to do the multiverse before Marvel. And now they're going to do it a year and a half after Marvel does it. And Marvel's going to be into this multiverse saga, like almost done a multiverse saga by the time we even get to the flash, to, to the flash multiverse. If it, if it even comes out. <laughs> exactly. And then we had like, we had a, we've had two wonder woman movies. One of them people love. And the other one is, my, is the second one. And then we had an Aquaman <laughs> movie, which is I think the highest grossing DC film to date, I believe is Aquaman one. Is it not? I think you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. So it's made over a billion dollars. So you have two, the two most successful characters on screen for DC. Okay, financially, the two biggest ones have a history of their people fighting, which are Atlanteans and Amazonians, and Marvel is going to beat you to that punch as well. And they haven't even introduced Namor yet. They haven't even introduced this guy, and and they're going to beat you to it. That it, it it boggles my mind how mismanaged they are over like because I remember when when Wonder Woman two came out and I was like oh, well, I I didn't think it was as bad as everybody did I was just kind of like yeah it was it was it was whatever it was what it was and the mu the mu music was pretty good but I was like yeah, it is what it was you know it was whatever it was whatever but then I was talking to to a friend Brock after and he's like man but they need to have the Amazonians and Atlanteans and I'm like yeah why don't they hint at this. <laughs> Like why? Why? Like you? It's honestly, Rob. It just it, it, that for me is like the when I watched the Black Panther trailer, that was all I thought about. Once you saw uh, Namor show up, I'm like, wow. Why? How, how has DC not gotten here yet? Oh yeah, and like the biggest hint that we've gotten is in a movie that was not was not really was not released in theaters, and that was the, the Just, Just League Snyder cut, in which that moment that scene where uh, they're digging Superman out of the grave and whatnot, and then uh, Diana and uh, Arthur are just talking, and they were talking about how we're we're basically sworn enemies, yet we're on the same team right now and stuff like that. So that's like you know the only hint that we've gotten yet. We've sure gotten a lot more, and it could have been a lot bigger. And uh, I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. I don't think it is. I mean, it, and it, like for me, I just you you have your two big like I said, your two biggest characters. You're coming in. We're gonna talk a little bit about Henry Cavill later on and how he might be in play into play or not. But yeah, I don't know. It's just the mismanaging over at DC. It drives me nuts. And then you see Marvel succeeding. And I know people are like on like the I hate Marvel bandwagon now because that's the hip thing to be is like to, to not oh, Love and Thunder was funny or whatever. I don't know. And I don't I haven't seen it yet. I don't really don't care if you like it or not. Like don't go see it though. Like the trailer to me, if I well, like I saw the trailer and I very much got an idea of the tone of that movie. I think, and I think I, you've seen it. And I'm from what I could, from what I would guess, is the tone of that trailer perfectly captures the tone of the film. Essentially, yes, it's a very goofy movie, and it's um, and not literally with goofy in it. Uh, it's just <laughs> spoilers, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, um, it's a, yeah, it's a, it, it's a it's a fine movie. I thought it weighed the comedy in the. Uh, drama a little bit better than most people seem to be thinking uh i thought that the story they told with jane was actually very good and compelling and whatnot and they found a way to do a, a very serious story at the same time be, uh, along with do, give, delivering very funny comedy and that's really all i wanted i m maybe it was slightly disappointing for me in some parts but altogether i thought it was a very strong movie and i got a i, I got a very much a kick out of uh thor love and thunder all right, let's move on to Mortal Kombat Part 2 Cruise Control. I Look, I love the original Mortal Kombat movie from 30 years ago, I, I guess, almost now. Yeah. Big fan. And I watch Annihilation uh, every once in a while just because I own it and I can. And I'm and it, it's as bad as it is, it lives up to the 90s superhero films of Super Mario Brothers, uh, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, Annihilate. They all look the exact same and feel like they all live in the same world. And there's something, there's something very comforting in the in those films for me i think back then i couldn't stand them but today i look at them and i'm like oh these are very comforting there's something comforting in the visuals 
they look cheap. And it's not a very good movie at all. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but there's something about it. But I, I, I was very excited for the, the new Mortal Kombat movie because they're like, it's going to be rated R and we're going to do this and we're going to stick to it. And I was like, okay, fine. Let's, I love Mortal Kombat. Let's do it. What do you got? And I, I watched the movie. Uh, with my wife and she had never played a Mortal Kombat game and the whole time she's like I don't know what's going on I'm like literally they just fight like <laughs> you don't have to worry but they just fight uh, so the movie started and I I really I actually really enjoyed it however and I know where you're where I'm not going to go into why you didn't like it about it because that, that's yours and I'm kind of I'm I'm not on the other side of the fence of you I didn't really mind what you hated the most about it I didn't mind it at the same time why is they just ask why but what i didn't like some of the writing was like really bad and the fact that everyone had to like i didn't like the way everyone's name was like announced they're like my name is now sub zero why like you should like were you sub zero 600 years ago when i saw like yeah. so that was kind of weird. and then the whole the scorp I, scorpion is my favorite character in mortal kombat i'm very original i know and I thought it was He's my I favorite thought, character too. <laughs> I like I love the idea that Scorpion traveled through hell to face Sub Zero. I love like that idea was kind of cool, but I didn't feel like it were like it did it. They were just like, oh, they kind of forced it in the they're like like they just say it, right? The idea is cool that he what he traveled through hell to get the sub zero. Um, I feel like Cole just should have been Scorpion and to just like just why not just make him scorpion but i like the idea and i really like uh the actor that plays scorpion in it as well and i thought he does he should have done a lot more um but for the most part i like i've seen the movie like probably seven times to be honest because i it's one of the ones i like to put on and just watch i do enjoy it uh I, I, too many characters died like goro are we gonna get goro again are they just gonna be like goro is just the name of like who knows um and obviously the tournament doesn't happen at all in this movie there is no mortal Kombat tournament uh, but the sequel is happening. They're bringing the director back. Rob, why don't you go into to your thoughts on the first one and what it might what might excite you for part two? So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll jump into the same part where it's just like firstly with Scorpion. I I, I love Scorpion too, except. You got you literally had a guy that lost his family at the beginning of the movie, and he goes straight to hell, and then it's just like he went to hell, and then I'm back. I'm just back at the end of the movie. That's it. You don't get to see him go through hell. I'm just like, come on. Like, that, seriously. that idea that idea is super cool. Like the idea is, it like, is. Like, I'm like, yeah, play with that. Give me that. Show me what hell looks like in live action thing and show him being tortured in hell. I don't want to see him being, you know, uh, yeah, we had a spawn movie and uh, he kind of got tortured in hell for a little bit with Mel Bolger or whatever, but that's a different movie we're talking about. I just talking about here, it's just like I'm back. I'm scared. Scorpion, I'm gonna kill you, Sub Zero. That's literally your end of the, your end of the movie. And now I'll go into the other part where you got a character called Cole <laughs> Young, who, as far as I know, doesn't even appear in any of these other games and stuff like that. And it's like I'm the uh, ancestor of, of okay. Scorpion. He's uh, not in the games, but I there is a the, this is what they said, and you and it's when they explain this, I kind of was like, okay, fine. They said they created the character for the movie. And they're like, why would you do that? And they said, well, they keep creating new characters for the games anyway. We felt like we could do that for the movie. So in a small way, I accept that they created a character for the movie to kind of fit their narrative. I'll leave it at that. And I'll let you continue. I just wanted to tell you that that was, their, that was why they kind of did it, right? Because they felt like they could because it's been done and they need to fit their narrative. I'm out now. And I completely understand that, but it's just like in a game, you could choose not to play as that character, your new <laughs> character. You could just not play as them and just be like, "Oh, I'll just fight, uh, fight him, and kill him when he's out of there." You're introducing this new character that sucks, and he's the lead character. And I'm just like, "Come on!" Like the the, the, the actor, I can't, I, I, I don't want to over disparage him on the on the poor actor, but I thought I he thought was he very. Was fine. I thought he was very poor. He was very emotionless to me in the movie. And it's just like, if I'm going to go on to something I really did like, Kano was awesome in the movie. I'll Kano's the best. Kano's Kano, the best. Fantastic. They Kano did him so amazing. well, and they killed yeah. him at the end. But also, you know, we were mentioning, you were mentioning Goro is going to be back and stuff like that. But the movie ends, and I've only seen it once, so pardon me if I get the exact quote wrong. But um, Shang Song says something along the lines of, uh, death is only, uh, yeah, only, yeah it, it, they, they kind of say that, you know, Anyone dead can come back easily. Yeah, which is and, a good combo. 
Yeah, and I'm I, so that makes me think that you know Kano will probably come back in some type of way. He was and, so good. And How do you not? As well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, Kano he, and he guess, played. Yeah, Johnny Cage and, and and Kano. Like, how do you not? How how do you not have those two in a movie together at this like at, yeah, at yeah. this point? No, totally. And it's like you 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 bring them into the next one, and it's like Sub Zero was great in the movie too. I'll I'll say that as well. He had a lot. Except of really for when he moments. said his name was Sub Zero, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but he had a lot of good moments yeah. and kills. And it's like you know when he takes off J- Jax's arms, like amazing, the, yeah. g- great scenes. Like action's done pretty well. But now just moving forward, you know, it, we got this director. And he's coming back again. Um, I'm not sure if he's the right choice to actually come back for this because, again, I believe this first Mortal Kombat movie was his first movie in terms of altogether, right? His first mm-hmm. movie role. And it's like, it kind of showed to me a little bit that it's like, this is his first role. Like, yeah, he did action scenes very well, but there was parts of the story that were just very choppy and stuff like that. And once again, I won't get into my big rant that I started this whole thing with, with Scorpion and Cole fucking young, excuse me. My, my <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I just hope if he's back, I hope he learned a few things. I hope he's ready to, uh, to go into the tournament. And, you know, unlike most people, I was okay with it. Not, you know, not having the tournament if you wanted to build to it and so forth. I, I I'm down for that. And, um, yeah, just they introduced a whole bunch of characters. Some were good, some were not, some were absolutely terrible. Um, and uh, yeah, I just hope that they they learn. F- he learns from his lessons and uh, of the of the first one, and just comes back stronger than ever. Because uh, I'll, I'll see the movie regardless of what I thought. So, and I think overall, I still liked the movie. I thought it was. Okay. And it's the it was the the highest watched movie on HBO Max last year, like a debut right. movie. That, so I, I'm curious what it would do in the box office because now it doesn't have that crutch of oh well it was on HBO Max now it's like it's it's in the box office people have seen the first one that's why I kind of I thought almost um and and I'm I'm glad to give the, the director a second shot but that's why I was almost a little bit curious like thinking that they might go with another director who kind of wanted to take this franchise in another step mm-hmm. and like James Cameron with Alien right like something to that effect where you grab someone who loves us so much and, and you take it in another direction, kind of like even like prey that's coming out uh, at the end of next week. Right. So just some, someone fresh, fresh blood into, or I mean, uh, all the predator, movies, like the fresh blood taking it to another direction to see, because the shortcomings of the first one, we'll see how they play out. But again, but like this one now there's, I think there's a lot more pressure on this one because the first one, Obviously, the HBO Max thing, but even before that, it felt like it didn't have to do too too well. I'm I, I don't know what the budget is on it, or if they have a budget yet. But you got to keep it minimal, I think, for it to be successful. But you still have to have good special effects. At the end of the day, it still can't look too too cheesy, and you have to have. I think you got to get somebody. I don't know if they will, but I, I would really like to see like maybe a B lister play Johnny Cage in this movie, like somebody with kind of a face. And maybe not like the face, you know, maybe like a Hallmark Channel actor, Rob, but like somebody with like a, with like a Hollywood looking face to play uh, Johnny Cage is what I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with it. I am excited for it, but I, I, I think the, the odds are stacked against them. I think it's going to be tough for this one to be a, a success after the success of the first one with HBO Max. I just I just I feel like this one's. If the budget's too high, they're not going to hit it. And I really want to see a third Mortal Kombat movie. I really want to see a third one. Yeah, it, it, you know they could they could build to it completely. I just want to see more of the stuff that we have not seen in a Mortal Kombat movie yet. Yeah, like go go fully into Outworld, which we could have easily done in the first one, but whatever, we didn't. And you know, start going into these other worlds in which, like you know, the games have gone into, and there's there's proper story for all these types of worlds, and it would be a great thing to do. And I know when you're talking about casting for Johnny Cage, I know wrestling fans seem to be really wanting WWE superstar The Miz. To be him, and there he is, there, James. If you can see that kind of, that's that's the yeah. That's he, the, might, he might work. I've movie. seen him. I see. I saw him in that Christmas movie. Oh, when it, was it one of the WWE Christmas movies that, he, that mm-hmm. he did? One of those? Okay. Yeah, he was okay. I don't know. He's not a great actor, so I mean, but at the same time, like you know, they they could find somebody else, and I mean, um, to keep the budget low, maybe they should find a more of an unknown. That might be the better way to go for it, but who knows. Yeah, we'll we'll find out. We're gonna. And I, all I all I want is just 
Johnny Cage, you replace Cole Young, okay? So you go, you come in, Cole Young, you you say, I'm out of here. <laughs> I wonder if they'll I wonder if they'll do what they did in Annihilation. They'll just kill off Cole Young like they did with Johnny Cage. Do like, it. Bah. Do it. <laughs> this is for you, Rob. <laughs> I'll <laughs> cheer. I'll cheer yeah. in the movie theater. I'll be like, yes, eight. yes, he's dead, he's gone. Oh, wait uh, a second, he's back by the end of it because of what Shang Song Shang Song said. Uh, <laughs> and, he comes and he saves the day in his gold Aquaman top. It's, I mean, that, that was like the cheat. That was my my least favorite thing about him was they they clearly couldn't figure out what his skill set would be, right? What his gift would be, which is like, okay, whatever. All right, let's move on to our final topic of the day, Rob. And that is Henry Cavill was uh, rumored to appear at San Diego Comic-Con to announce that he would be returning as Superman, I believe, in Black Adam. I don't think he's going to be in Black Adam, though. I never have. And apparently, and then he, of course, did not show up. And everybody was, everybody's in a fit of rage. Everybody was in a fit of rage because everybody but WB wants Henry Cavill back as Superman. And then word has come out now that he has uh, contracted COVID, and that is the reason why he wasn't there. However, it looks like he contracted COVID after San Diego Comic-Con, so the timing doesn't work out whatsoever. He also could have just Skyped in or Zoomed in or team meeting in or you know Facebook Messenger video live chat. We could have somehow done that, uh, but, they, but you know, they didn't want that. They want him in person. Then, of course, The Rock Rob had an interview where he discussed Superman. He's like, we don't even know who our Superman is right now. He did say that that Henry Cavill was a Superman of this generation and he has friends with Henry Cavill and you know, they both we, we have talk- the same uh, agent. They were the same agent. And the one thing, you know, we were talking earlier about DC and if one person has power in DC right now, it is the rock. The rock is the, uh, the rumor. The word is that the reason why we got that trailer for all the DC movies that ended up getting moved like a month later was because the rock demanded to have a presence during the Super Bowl, the Rock said we need to have a presence during the Super Bowl, and that's why they did that. It was because of the Rock. So if anyone has any leeway here, it is the Rock. However, the other rumor, Rob, is that Henry Cavill has always wanted too much more money than Warner Brothers has been willing to give him to return to the role. And I am with Henry Cavill on this because he has been dicked around way too long by them. He's been he's been Superman, and he's been treated like he's been treated like garbage. You know, like when Black Widow is treated with more respect than Superman or Ant-Man's treated with more respect than Superman or Hawkeye or who else is a C-level superhero that MC, the MC, everything the MCU has done is C-level minus Spider-Man. Like, you know, any of these, like they all get treated way better than Superman, like the most iconic character in the world. Uh, so I don't really blame him there. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think he wasn't there because of COVID? Do you think Henry Cavill is returning as our Superman? Um, well, I'll go into the thing as to whether he's going to return as Superman uh, later. But I think in general, with this whole story about him getting COVID and whatnot, and yeah, it appeared that uh, he got COVID after uh, um, uh, San Diego Comic-Con. But regardless, I mean... Could they have brought him out to accomplish this, but he had COVID or maybe he had a COVID scare and he never officially had COVID until afterwards and he only stayed out because that's a possibility too, right? Um, when when you're in, if he was in close contact with somebody that had COVID and he doesn't have it yet, they could have just left him out because of that and he only officially got COVID afterwards. That's a possibility. But as to whether he is actually going to be in Black Adam, I think that ship has sailed. I think any, anybody that thinks he's in Black Adam should probably... Um, just come to terms with the fact that he probably isn't. I mean, um, a lot of people like to say that, you know, Black Adam seemingly doesn't have like a villain showed up or, you know, a conflict showed up. And I'm just like, I don't know about what, what, what everyone else is seeing, but it could, seems like there's a, a fairly strong conflict in both of those trailers between Black Adam and Hawkman. I mean, whether Hawkman yes. can really stand up to him or not, that's another situation. But he also has another a full team of Justice Society members that can help him out in that fight. But there definitely seems to be a tension and a uh, uh, a conflict there between him and between uh, Black Adam and Hawkman. So I, that's what I kind of see there. And with Superman in general, I mean, yeah, you could have brought him in. And I think that this was the moment to bring him in for because, yeah, you know, he could have um, Skyped in skyped in for it instead and or zoomed in and whatnot but it's just it doesn't bring the same energy as actually bringing him out yeah. on stage and san diego comic-con was kind of the last time because unless they're thinking about doing dc fandom live in person and 
That's one point. And the second point, do it in such short notice to have it out before October 17th or whatever that exact date is that Black Black Adam comes out. I mean, uh, I, I think the ship has sailed because your chance to walk Superman, walk, walk Henry Cavill out onto stage and say that he's back as Superman in Black Adam uh, has kind of sailed and they lost their last opportunity. I mean, the only other opportunity I think that they would remainly have if they want to do have a really big presence at New York Comic Con, that might be their last possible In October, right? That's in October. I, I, I think, think it's, I think it's typically late September, isn't it? That was like on Thanksgiving, yep. I think. Is I so okay. here's the thing: if he is Superman in this movie, which I, I don't believe he is, I yeah. kind of feel like let that be a surprise anyway in the movie. Um, but I don't think he's in this one. I think if he's going to be in a movie, he's going to be in the sequel. He's going to be in Black Adam yeah. two. I think that's where it makes sense. You don't need Superman in Black Adam one, in my opinion. You need him in if you, if you need him at all. You need him in part two and whatnot. So yeah. that's where I am on it. I. I don't know if Henry Cavill is coming back. There's a little bit, a lot of reports that he is, a lot of reports that he isn't. And it's like, he, you know, you know how I feel about Man of Steel. I think he should be back. Yeah. And I think he could, and because of all this multiverse crap that they're doing, he could still be Superman. And if they really want to separate themselves from the Snyder stuff, he could be a Superman in a different multi, in a different universe, right? The universe that they're playing in now, I think they can. And and I read another report that that DC or Warner Brothers doesn't quite know how to use Superman. And I'm like, this is the dumbest. If that is the reason why they're not making Superman movies, is because they are morons at the head right now. Because you can do a movie with Superman. Everyone and it, it, this is how I felt with Luke Skywalker too. Is like everyone's like, oh, he's too powerful. Can't do anything with Luke. Like you're an idiot. You're overthinking what you have. You are overthinking what you have with these characters. You kind of so maybe you need somebody else in charge of your creative of those characters if that's how you are and that's how your mentality is because i completely disagree that you can't tell a good superman story in modern times and i completely disagree that luke skywalker is always going to be the most the most fascinating person on screen because if you do it properly grogu will be way more fascinating oh yes and, and we're talking about creatively for uh warner brothers in dc right now i mean I, I still think this whole thing is very much in flux. I mean, we because, I mean, they just got taken over just like, you know, a month or two ago, right, by Discovery. So they're still in the process of uh, hiring and firing and getting rid of a whole bunch of properties that they want or don't want and finding their creative heads. And, you know, we have, we've had the rumor that they want to make, create their own DC studio and that, that requires its own creative head and whatnot. Right. So there's a lot of like, uh, you know, they're, they're coming out with all these movies, but they got to decide on a path they need to go on. And um, I think that's whole, all been slowed down with this, uh, uh, buyout uh, that uh, where Discovery bought Warner Brothers, and uh, as for whether Henry Cavill will be back, I think it's still possible. He could still come back, and very much one of them. I mean, whether they will pay him that top fledged money that he reportedly has is another question. Because yeah, does he deserve it? Yeah, he, yeah, he he probably does. He he deserves like you know uh, the fifteen or million dollars a movie or twenty million dollars a movie. But the pro and this is where the problem lies is that when we look at the DCU and maybe even DC movies in general over the past you know ten years or so, we've only really had one DCU movie that we just talked about that made a billion dollars, and that was Aquaman. And all the other ones have fallen short of a billion dollars. And the only other DC movie that's made a billion dollars was Joker, right? And that's getting its own sequel that will be coming out uh, uh, shortly as well. And so it's like, and, and and the fact that neither of those two billion dollar movies starred Henry Cavill, I mean, all you have MC, or something like the MCU that's had multi-billion dollar movies, uh, at least 10 of them now. And, you know, that's where they're getting their money from. And, you know, uh, that's, that's, um, make it possible for them to pay these actors as much as they do because the amount of money that they're making here right like you know and uh, um robert downey jr is able to make so much money because he's technically for them starred in five billion dollar movies right one iron man movie and four avengers movies right so that's a big deal and actually sorry civil war as well so that's that's even six right there. Well, the the difference oh. there, all them is also that there is uh, Kevin Feige has a plan and he sticks to it regardless. And DC has nothing and they don't stick to anything and it gets frustrating yeah. for everybody. And and you know, anyway, who knows? I don't know what's going on. No one does. Yeah, and I mean when we're comparing it to it entirely, yeah, like you know MCU over the past 
you know, year and a half, two years now have been coming out with their projects where it's just like, you don't really know where it's all going, but they're coming out with the good projects. And that's kind of similar to what DC has been doing recently over the uh-huh. past couple of years. Although in one case, you know that Kevin Feige does have a plan and he's just slowly rolling it out and that we got a full big glimpse of at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Meanwhile, yeah, DC and Warner Brothers, they're coming out with good projects as well, good movies and whatnot. It's just that um, we have n- we don't have a faith as to know- they know where they're going because we're pretty sure they don't. They don't know where they're going. That is very clear. Um, I like the idea of having um, like creative directors create, but that only goes so far. You know what I mean? Like you need we're in a world where people want things to be connected. Um, and I, 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 you know how I feel, not everything needs to be connected, but people want things to be that way. And if that's what, and I think some characters like Superman, I think they deserve to be in a world that is connected. And I love the Batman, but I think Batman's another character that if you compare it to, uh, if you want to go toe to toe with Marvel, that's another character that needs to coexist with more of your heroes. Now they might be doing something with their black Adams, and the Justice Society and Wonder Woman and Aquaman, where they can take the more like Marvel B list characters that they have, like what Marvel did when they didn't have Spider Man or the X Men. And maybe they're going to do that. And then like the Batman and Jokers can all live in like their separate universe. If that might be the way they go, I don't know. I don't even know if that's the right way. Um, but but that's the, the key issue is no one has faith in what they're doing over there. And when you don't have faith, why are you going to pony up money to go see a movie when? They might not have plans for a sequel or a spinoff or anything. It's just, this is a one-off that feels like it should be more than a one-off. Why am I here? Yeah. And I mean, if we t- want to talk about something interconnected that I could very much see happening, I mean, we may be talking about Superman probably not being in Black Adam, but I do think there's a possibility that Shazam could show up in Black Adam. But more specifically, I think there's an even bigger possibility where Black Adam Start, uh, shows up in Shazam too, like maybe at the end of that, and opening yeah, up the door there. I don't think we're getting any any kind of connection or cameos in. in you don't think so? In Black Adam, I think Shazam two is where we would see it because the director of Black Adam said he does. By the end of the movie, he doesn't know that Shazam or Superman exist within that movie. He doesn't know, but when but the when that movie ends and when Shazam and Shazam two happen, we don't know the time period between those. So there is a chance that, that in that time frame he could learn and then he could be in Shazam too. That I, that I would buy, I would buy him appearing in Shazam too before Shazam or Superman appear in, in black Adam. Yeah. But it's also a possibility that, you know, that's how he ends his movie, but we've seen plenty of other, especially MCU movies where you have post grad scenes that are directed by different directors. So if by chance, you know, after black Adam's done, that's when he meets, Shazam in a postcard scene directed by David F. Sandberg. I could see that being a possibility, but I do agree with you that, yeah, it's far more a possibility that I could see Black Adam showing up at the end of Shazam 2, more so than the other way around. Yep. Very possible. Yep. All right, Rob, we're going to wrap it up there. Anything else you want to say on the matter? No, just in general, uh, I was glad to see like, you know, a, a couple big things. I wish DC had a stronger San Diego Comic-Con, but, you know, with this whole thing about Henry Cavill and whatnot and, you know, not re- be, really being able to talk about The Flash at all. In fact, the only time that they talk about The Flash is in the Shazam 2 trailer where they don't even show uh, Ezra Miller's face. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, and yeah, and uh, Mar- Marvel had a really good presentation. that I, I was bigger than I thought it was going to be. Marvel hits it up. They know what they're doing, man. They know they they are a PR masterclass in PR over there. All right, Rob, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me at Robert E. McDonald on both Instagram and Twitter. And then uh, jump on to uh, Letterboxd and uh, check out some of the movies I've been watching. I recently watched uh, She's All That again for the first time in a, in a very, very long time. And after I was afterwards, I was just like, this movie's not all that good. I'm going to I'm gonna watch the parody movie that parodies it directly and watch Not Another Teen Movie. And so, yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting day of watching some movies that were uh, semi-fun. But, yeah. <laughs> that's all i really got for you aside uh, from that you, uh, on letterbox you can find me at nightwing with a six instead of a g 
Six times G. All right, everybody. This is Digital Charcuterie Super Tuesday on a Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.